Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So glad that you are here with us this morning. If you are, and it's good to be together today. Glad that you could be with us for worship. I want to say a special welcome to all who are joining us by Facebook or by the radio. We'll uh, try and find you to, to share those with you. You can find our order of service at centenarychurch.com in our greeting. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. When you give to them, they gather it. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. May the glory of the Lord endure. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. Thank you, praise team. Good morning. Let us join together for our opening prayer. Oh God, you sent the Holy Spirit to enkindle the zeal of Christ's followers waiting in Jerusalem for his promised gift. 
Pour the same inspiration on your people here assembled and on the Church of Christ throughout the world. Revive the power of the gospel in our hearts, that it may be to us a sacred trust for the blessing of all creation. Enable your church to spread the good news of salvation so that all nations may hear it in their own tongues and welcome it into their own lives. Protect, encourage, and bless all ministers of the cross and prosper their works and works so that Jesus, being lifted up, may draw all people unto him and the kingdoms of the world may become the kingdom of our Lord and of Jesus. Our children's choir and our youth bands helping out. the people said amen. Good job. Let us join together for our prayer for illumination. Draw us close, Holy Spirit, as the scriptures or all other words slip away. May there be one voice we hear today, the voice of truth and grace. Amen. Our epistle lesson today is taken from the 8th chapter of Romans, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, in the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Our lesson today from Acts is chapter 2, the first 21 verses. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Very nearly every parent has had the experience of giving a child uh, a gift, that you have shopped for a toy that is just perfect, only to find the child plays with something else. Maybe it's a, an older toy that they forgot that they had. Maybe it's a toy that you gave to one of the other children and they wrestle it away. Or maybe it's the box. I remember uh, gathering together with our, our family in South Carolina years ago before Karen and I had any children. And one of my nieces received a, a, a large play kitchen. And while we were assembling the kitchen, uh, she crawled into the box and giggled and giggled and giggled. We finished assembling, and she stayed there in the box. Well, all of the adults watched in dismay, shaking our head in consternation at the absurdity of it all. And yet, how often do all of us play with the box and miss the gift. I can't tell you the number of Bible studies that I have been a part of, times that I have been uh, working through this particular scripture, and we got caught up in the box of it all. We spent our time talking about the wind and the flames and the speaking in tongues. I've had numerous conversations about uh, whether or not the, the miracle was in the tongue of the speaker or the ear of the hearer. Was it a, a gift for only that moment or, or is it something that lasts for all time and space? The thing of it is, all of those questions are the box. One commentator says of this particular passage, it is pointless to ask explicit questions about the wind and the tongues of fire, for there is no likelihood that we will ever receive satisfactory answers. Was it only the disciples who heard them and saw them? Were they audible and visible to the entire community of Jerusalem? There's no way we would know. What is certain is that the wind and the fire were held to be the symbols of the arrival of the Holy Spirit. 
whatever else can be said of this day. It is about the coming of the Spirit of God upon the community of people to make us different, to make us to be the church. You know, there are some who, who suggest that the best way to think about Pentecost is as the birthday of the church, the day in which it comes into being. And it's worth noting that Luke, the author of both the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, puts this story in the exact same place as the story of Christmas morning. A reminder to all of us that this is a birth. The birth of a new community. The birth of something special. And it is worth noting that when Peter stood before the assembled crowd, he never talked about the tongues of fire. He never talked about the, the mighty wind. He never even talked about speaking in foreign languages. Instead, he talked about dreams. He stood before the assembled crowd and he said, People of Jerusalem, this is what it means. And he connected it to the, uh, to the prophet Joel and to those iconic words that the Spirit of God would be poured out on all people. And your young will see visions. And your old will dream dreams. I want to suggest to you that the real gift of this day is not the tongues, it's not the fire, it's not the wind, it is dreams. Because at our heart, that is who we are. The church of Jesus Christ is the place where the dream of God resides. We are the keepers of the dream. We are the ones who hold on to the dream of what can be. And we follow the greatest dreamer of all. It is God who looked into chaos and dreamed creation. It's God who saw a group of slaves in Egypt and dreamed a kingdom of priests. It's God who saw a group of fishermen and tax collectors and dreamed the church. This reality that, that toppled even the power of Rome. And it is that dream that brings us together today. The dream of what life can be. The dream of all people gathered together. The dream of justice of peace, of mercy. You know, Henry David Thoreau uh, once wrote that, uh, once wrote, we are as much as we see, for the hand serves the eye. Dreams shape us, they form us, and they make us into who we are. When we were kids, we dreamed wildly we dreamed of being a professional athlete. We dreamed of being a dancer. We dreamed of being a fireman. Uh, uh, we dreamed all sorts of dreams. Altogether, too many adults have given up the fine art of dreaming, preferring instead the ordinary, the regular, the normal. We gathered here together one liturgical year ago today. The first time that Centenary came together for worship. Now we are in a different place. And my brothers and sisters, if we let ourselves turn just back to normal, we will miss the dream of God. I want to suggest to you that God dreams more than normal for us, more than ordinary. God is inviting us to consider what can be, what should be. We can be more. We can be 
the people of God. And may we always be people who are shaped by dreams. Amen? Our song is Holy Spirit, Come Confirm Us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Today, I present Trent Adams, Aaron Anuber, Gabby Anuber, Aubrey Bullock, Emily Friesen, Rebecca Friesen, Grant Leary, Dylan Muse, Emmy Riddick, Alex Start for confirmation. See you on high. 
Before we go into our series of questions for our, our for our confirmands this morning, I did want to uh, say a special thanks to Leanne Friesen. I just saw her somewhere. Uh, she helped out for the weekend when we were up at Camp Don Lee uh, with the confirmands on our confirmand retreat a couple of months ago. And I also wanted to thank uh, Bryce and Grace Detweiler for coming and helping lead worship for us as well. Uh, I'll start with a series of uh, questions for our confirmands, and then the church will be invited uh, for a series as well. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust and grace in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Do you, as Christ's body, the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ, the church. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With, With God's, God's help, help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness 
that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all you can to power and strengthen its ministries? As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your witness, and your service? Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body, offer ourselves to God and let us offer our gifts for the ministry of Jesus Christ. But first, let us welcome our newest members here of the church.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace and reconciliation with one another. Therefore, let us join together and confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please join me in our great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, in the beginning your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, 
and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself for, up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your Holy Church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we break this bread, we share in the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. This is the blood of Christ given for you. Now let us join together in our prayer after the meal. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Go now, as the people of God, to dream the dream of God. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. I raise our